actually this work is made in this technique called glitch. So I'm using some Russian videos, strange tunnels. Again, it's just an imitation, it's not a real robot that has no brain, it's just my you know, artwork uh, without any interaction with the people, so yeah, that's it. Uh, but my next project is much smarter, I mean, <laughs> it, it can do much more. And it's called mod.m, what means modem and totem in the same time. Uh, and this project wa was inspired by Hindu Milk Miracle. Uh, Hindu Milk Miracle happens in uh, 1994 or 1995, yeah, or 1995, it's written over here. So uh, what it actually was, um, in some uh, temples in India, uh, some Ganesh um, sculptures started to drink milk that was uh, not a gift, uh, like, yeah, you know, uh, Hinduists they gift milk, uh, it's not the right word actually, not to gift, but uh, to sacrifice, yeah, uh, milk to the sculptures. Uh, it's like a, a kind of a, you know, way to interact with the god so to give something from you to god and to ask him for you know health uh, kids whatever so and uh, uh, some of the sculptures actually one of the sculptures started to drink milk uh, in one of the temples and it was like one of the the first i have seen in my life big uh, crazy flash mobs all around the world uh, made by television, so internet wasn't that in involved at that time, uh, and uh, so the television was the, like the main mass media um, way how information was spread around the world. So, and I was just nine years old at that time, but I saw it on the video uh, on the TV, and I was so impressed that Hinduists all around the world started to bring milk to sculptures, uh, not not like usually just you know, one per month, but you know, every day, and lots of sculptures started to drink it. Uh, and uh, most of them were fake, or just, you know, or they were um, wanting uh, that uh, sculptures will drink, but in real, in the real, they were just, you know, like doing it fast, and it was just falling out of the spoon. So it was just uh, like a craziness, you know, uh, massive craziness of many, many people. Like, I don't know the, the right word for this, like a par not a paranoia, but you know, something crazy happening. So uh, I was so impressed by this. So it was in my memory for many years. And uh, when I started to be an artist and started to work with technologies, uh, I decided to recreate some kind of a new version of this um, event, of this uh, strange um, thing. So I built a robot that accept gifts from the uh, um, from the people that are coming to the exhibition uh, and it's look at kind of like uh, uh, Ganesh but it's it's not the elephant G Ganesh it's a god yeah with the elephant head so and it's it's look at like this so I, I'm, I'm using vacuum cleaner here and metal detector and people should put something metal to it uh, like coin um, whatever, you know, nail, just what they have in the pocket or they can, like in all temples, normal, you can buy something in the temple, like a candle and put it for the, you know, for the icon or for the sculpture of the Jesus Christ, Buddha, whatever. So, and I also had something where people could take something from and put it to the God, like uh, uh, to make to make this donation, to make this gift. So. Uh, it has also uh, Nimbus, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so what it was actually doing, when you put the metal object, uh, it detects that something is uh, put into the, uh, that something exists in the small ball, and uh, it accepts this, and woke up from the hibernate mode, 
so it's actually like sleeping, standing on the exhibition and sleeping. But uh, when you put something, it woke up and uh, they bless you with the glitch uh, noises uh, and take it with the vacuum cleaner. So it, it's like accepting of the gift and uh, like God starts to interact with you. It's not like just you putting it uh, at, at, at that. No, it's like God is answering to you. So it's kind of a communication. And the whole exhibition was dedicated to internet art. that send you some blessings every day like a spam emails with uh, robot vendor uh, quotes and some crazy quotes from Marshall McLuhan so it's all about the media and stuff like this The next robot, which is again more complicated than the previous one, is called Financial Risks. And uh, again, it's an interactive uh, project and uh, uh, it, it had very strange uh, way how people were interacting with it. Actually, to activate the robot, you need to sweep your credit card. So when you came to exhibition, this robot is standing and it's not doing anything. It's just the video that stacks uh, and no sounds nothing but uh, when you read the description it's written that you can activate the robot but you need to have a risk because you need to sweep your credit card and you don't know maybe it will charge some money from you and it will even steal money from you uh, it was like a gap uh, like a trap made by me for the people so it was I was curious will the people will people interact with it or not so it was like my social experiment actually robot is just a you know just an object for me it was much more interesting what how they will work with it how the audience will work with it how they will react on it will they sweep or will they just stand and you know uh, wait if uh, if it has something happens or someone will sweep uh, and I was really impressed because many many people they were sweeping cards and I get about 400 credit cards sweep it uh, by you know in this robot but uh, so when you sweep you get uh, some sounds you get some visuals that are changing on the screen uh, videos again are in glitch made in glitch aesthetic so it's a, a Sega game console a famous Japanese uh, game console from 90s 16 bit that I circuit band so I modified it uh, modified it to produce some abstract images instead of uh, game and uh, you also uh, produce sounds, uh, activate sounds with the credit card or um, and uh, at the same time change the video uh, and you can take two cards and start to play on it like on a music instrument or you can, uh, you know, few few people can do it with cards uh, simultaneously then you'll get more changes so each sweep is changing something but when as much sweeps you have then there are m much more changes and um, there is also a small Keyboard, so you can you can uh, add your pin code if you are crazy, if you are so like uh, if you are risky, if you want to try, it, then you get the check, and check uh, is printed from the uh, check is printed from the small um, thermal printers, same printer as used for uh, terminals to print checks at, at each store. 
So and uh, instead of uh, check, you will get actually the artwork. So like a print screen from the screen. So you will get your results on a check. So which will prove that you sweep the card and you will get an artifact from the installation. So it's kind of an ATM machine where you, by, by your risk, uh, you're getting some piece of art that you can have with you and you can keep it. So. Just a little bit uh, louder, if it's possible. Yeah, because video was not good. Thank you. I was impressed that many, many people were doing it actually, and uh, but. It wasn't connected to internet, I wasn't getting any data from it, so it, uh, but people didn't know about it, so uh, I could do it and I could steal the number, but uh, you can add actually any four digits and it will still print you, but people were adding real uh, uh, pin codes because they were thinking that they, should, they must do it, so it was like a really, really funny thing, but in the same uh, um, time very scary for me because people were you know like crazy to do it to do it I was also thinking about uh, uh, anonymously say to police that uh, someone made a trap like this uh, on the exhibition just for the PR but yeah it's dangerous you can go to jail because it's illegal to even to ask people to swim cars without the license of the shop or band The next project I want to show you is even more complicated again, <laughs> and it's called Conus. And uh, uh, actually, it's a sound installation in general, but uh, and it's not interactive, but I could call it generative. So it's uh, generating uh, uh, sounds and actually some small videos uh, on three small screens by itself, and. Uh, uh, the core idea of this project is to use uh, cellular automata. So uh, it's uh, kind of the name of many different algorithms that are imitating uh, artificial life uh, of very simple organisms, like uh, simple cells, uh, and how they are, could be organized with very simple rules. So it's a bit complicated for me to explain. Mathematicians, very big mathematicians, invented uh, this uh, in uh, uh, 40s, 50s, 60s of 20th century, and uh, scientists like uh, uh, Neumann uh, and uh, Turing, uh, John Conway were working a lot uh, on this problem. And in one of the books uh, by Stefan Wolfram, who is uh, one of the biggest mathematicians of our age. Uh, who, who is still alive and uh, he's uh, doing uh, many many studies in mathematics. Uh, I also in one of his books I saw uh, that actually there are exist very close analogs of these algorithms in nature and uh, one of them is uh, Conus Textile. So this, this is a shell uh, with the mollusk uh, which is like maybe 10 centimeters big it's not a huge uh, uh, cone uh, not a hu not a huge uh, um, shell um, uh, but uh, the ornament that it have uh, that it has with them they were always very complicated and different uh, changes in sound and it was like a you know endless uh, sound ambient project
that have similar images but with some differences and they have a bit different shapes, different scale of these triangles uh, but in general they are all very similar and the algorithm of how this ornament is growing is almost the same but just to get more different results and to make it a bit more beautiful I've chosen different kinds and it's very important to mention that uh, these shells uh, actually the mollusks that are living in these shells are one of the most poisonous uh, animals on the earth they are in top 10 most poisonous animals even higher than cobra, snake and many different other animals that people are uh, thinking are very dangerous so they are much more dangerous and uh, they could kill uh, because they are shooting with the uh, needles and uh, uh, this is how they are hunting so they are stopping uh, their, um, the fish with the very poisonous uh, shot and uh, it's very dangerous even for people so people are dying because there is no way to prevent uh, processes of poison in the blood yeah but I, I think it's very poetic it's, it's really cool uh, that uh, they are so strange and yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't possible to get them before 50s uh, so scientists didn't know about them a lot because they are living only in a few parts of the ocean in Pacific Ocean and uh, uh, they are living on a uh, very deep so without special equipment it wasn't possible to get uh, shells uh, from uh, to get many many of them to study to uh, uh, research uh, how the ornament was created so uh, a scientist invented algorithm first and then they saw a very similar thing in the nature which i find very very interesting uh, so, as you can see, I'm passing many different projects, maybe, I don't know how much time I have, if it's not too boring, I can show us a couple of different, but it's, it's up to you and, yeah. Uh, so, this project, which I actually bring with me to this festival, is called Reading My Body, and uh, technically it's a very simple project, but uh, uh, the concept uh, is complicated and poetic, as I think. So I made this tattoo on my hand and uh, I, I have created especially for this project uh, robot uh, that reads this tattoo as a score, as a sound score, uh, actually just as a trigger and uh, for this project I'm using very very simple uh, sensors that are called black line sensors. They are used a lot in robot technique, in uh, industrial, automatic um, things uh, so they are just the distance sensors they are just detecting if they are over white or over black surface and uh, I have very contrast white skin so with the black ink it's, they are working perfect so they are detecting if they are over the white or over the black surface and I also add three-dimensional controller based on uh, Nintendo VII uh, wireless uh, joystick uh, and uh, I have a, you know, I, I modified this piece again just recently, it's not documented. Uh, I had an Arduino of the gyroscope which do the similar thing as the Nintendo, so to get more different changes. So, uh, while well, the reading uh, of the tattoo, I can also move my hand to get in three dimensions to get more changes, more expression for the sound. Uh, so it's like, a, like an additional thing to make. Uh, more variable and more interesting my performance. So I have a very short video with, with how it works. Uh, you don't need to mind this as a sound performance, it's just crazy demonstrations, demonstrations of some shitty sounds, uh, just you know like noises, yeah, but you, you will get the idea. So as you can see there are Already there is a LED LED which flashes every time when the, uh, when the sound is started and there are actually two sensors so to make more variable uh, results. So when you see the red, red light it means that the uh, uh, sensor is over the white surface.
after the black surface. Yeah, so it's like when it's going from the black to white, it's a sense trigger. So it's just a mineral sensor. But I'm working uh, on a new project where I will use camera, uh, color detectors uh, for this. It, it's actually just a prototype to test the technology, to test the idea actually, not the technology, to test the, the conce conceptual idea of the whole piece. And uh, I could say it was. Uh, uh, very successful because I get uh, lots of feedbacks, even bad because some people were saying why you, you know um, destroy your hand and made this uh, strange sounds. Uh, it's uh, why you didn't made it, but I don't care. I really like to do these strange things. So for me, it's even better if people will react negative, which is I think also important. I don't want to prove them anything, but. Uh, it's, for me, this uh, the main concept is that uh, I have an object that plays sounds from my body and actually it's like me performing on a stage but I don't need to do anything. So the robot can do everything for me but uh, it's, it will be still me, still me performing together with him. So it's a kind of a hybrid of machine and uh, human being, uh, artist. So uh, maybe it's just the beginning. Uh, but um, already very fun, yeah. So it will keep going like this. You can see it tomorrow on my performance. I will do it a bit more interesting, I hope. <laughs> but yeah, let's see how it goes. It's always a challenge. Uh, do I have some time more, or it's boring and I should you know stop? Uh, uh, I think uh, one more example, and then uh, okay. another conclusion. Oh, I will just uh, show a few works, but I will, will not stop on them. Uh, okay, I will just, you know, explain what they are doing. This robot is called Egophone, uh, and uh, it has its own Facebook uh, and Twitter pages. And every time when someone uh, press like or send uh, comment, or post comment, or do whatever to, you know, with the social. Uh, a page it uh, hits uh, himself with the stick and start to say uh, preaches by Osho. Uh, Osho was a very famous uh, Hindu teacher and philosopher in USA and in India in 70s, 80s. And so it's um, and he was like. Uh, teaching how to fight with his own ego and uh, when you get likes on Facebook it's always like growing your ego I mean not ego, ego to, to spell it right in English so. Again it's a very glitchy funny machine doing some this is how it works uh, this project is called Turbo Gusli Gusli is a famous uh, Russian and I think not only Russian it's popular in all uh, East Europe uh, kind of string instruments that is going from uh, medieval and uh, so I made a robotized version by adding some servo motors and uh, solenoids and actually the project is made to be controlled from the emotive epoch EEG headset so it's like translating Russian idea to robot and the robot plays you know ideas of strange Russian guy uh, with the old Russian instrument but uh, in the same time it's uh, like a robotized instrument so it's a combination of uh, so it's very ironical for me because uh, we have lots of problems with uh, church in Russia which is saying you know that all this modern art is shit uh, we don't uh, we, we're losing our roots uh, by doing this crazy contemporary art we should be more traditional more orthodox so I decided to make like an orthodox robot so now no one can say that I'm doing something uh, anti-Russian, yeah, but in the same time it's just a joke. But it's playing for nice sounds, I like how it sounds, it's like just two pieces working as a full orchestra for me. Yeah, now it's an algorithmical, self-generated random mode, so sometimes it do wrong uh, movements. But it still plays some notes, uh, trigger the solenoid. Yeah, actually, 
actually that's it. It could be more faster, uh, more slower. Uh, this project is called Attractor, and it's also a generative uh, installation with, made even without the computer, just one Arduino and uh, two microphones uh, controlled by four servo motors that are searching for the feedback. Uh, so feedback is when it's a process which you get when you put the microphone in front of the speaker and you get this crazy high frequency sound which is actually called feedback. And, uh, but uh, the system is unstable so every time it gets feedback it's running away from it. So it's like searching for something This is a very loud installation, actually. Sorry, the video is not enough. Uh, uh, it's not enough uh, loud. So and, uh, every time when it gets feedback, it run, runs away from this feedback. So it's a kind of uh, uh, searching and losing, searching and losing all the time. Yeah. It is called a tractor. Uh, a track of uh, uh, physics, uh, some kind of theory of attractors. So it's too complicated even for me to understand. <laughs> so, okay, now the last piece. And uh, it's called Salaris, and it's a collaboration project I made together with two. So I, was, I was doing all the programming and the electronics. Uh, Yuli Baravai was the curator of the project, and so I made all the programmings and electronics, and, but we were working all together doing uh, the whole project there. So the, the core idea is to use um, ferromagnetic liquids, which is a very famous um, thing, uh, you use it in science experiments for kids, and you can see it, I think, in all science museums, and it was a commission for a Moscow Polytech Museum, uh, so uh, it should be not that crazy as some of my other projects, so to be more understandable for uh, just regular visitor, visitors. And uh, the book is called after uh, Stanislav Lem book Salaris. Uh, I think most of you saw, read the book, read the book or saw the movie by Tarkovsky or maybe the newer movie with the George Clooney. Uh, so. Uh, it was inspired by this book and uh, you will see why. Actually, what, what, what is happening here? Uh, using EEG, electroencephalographic uh, interface uh, made by Emotive Epoch, uh, we are controlling uh, big magnet, uh, which is activated by a robot under this, in this huge uh, ball. Um, with, with, this, uh, with the two kinds of liquids actually, with the ferromagnetic liquids and the spirits uh, because they are, they are not mixing uh, so they have different uh, physical um, states and they are, they are always separate so you cannot make cocktail from them and uh, one of the liquids is uh, uh, shining in the ultraviolet uh, light and the second liquid is magnetic uh, and uh, it's controlled by a huge magnet that is act activated under the um, that is moving under the liquids so you can get images fr from directly controlled by your brain just by your minds and state of your uh, by your mood state of your mind yeah uh, since i was programming this machine i spent much more time than <laughs> any of the participants or uh, other collaborators of this project so I could control it uh, just by thinking of what I want so I was uh, learning how to work with it and I get a feedback from my eyes and my brain to the magnet so whatever I want I can do with the magnet I could put it down start to spin turn it to different sides so uh, but it's also fun when just uh, visitors who never had experience to work with something similar started to work with it and they get really interesting results, sometimes even more interesting that I can get by controlling it uh, with my mind. So.
Uh, we have four motors inside uh, with four different uh, axes uh, of freedom uh, and the magnet is just a passive magnet uh, actually two motors are actuators that are moving up and down uh, at uh, different sides and uh, two other motors are spinning the uh, big magnet to get far more results of the image sometimes it would be very fast or it would be very slow Sound is just a fake, it's just uh, to make the video not so boring. Because there is no sound in this installation to make it, to, to help people to concentrate more when they're in the silence. I'm done. If someone have some questions, I can answer. Thank you.